is held in person. Nobody um, is on Zoom. We're all here. Um, and it is streamed on YouTube. Uh, public participation is requested that members of the public wishing to address the commission submit a speaker card. Um, I have one already. Uh, when public comment is opened on an agenda item, individuals may speak once per agenda item. Um, as I said, submit a speaker card and uh, we'll go ahead and get going um, we'll, with the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, then let's do roll call. Present. Commissioner Deckert. Present. Commissioner Hall. Present. Commissioner Imadi. Here. Commissioner Vickers. Here. And Chair Brown. He present. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, any agenda amendments? There are none from staff. Great, all right, and then the approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. I second it. All right, uh, then do I, um, all those in favor of approving the regular minutes for the September 12th meeting, say aye. 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 All those opposed? One abstention, not there. Abstentions. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, that passes. All right, then we'll go ahead and um, open up to the public. So I don't have any general public comments. I have no cards. All right, then um, what I had, do have one announcement that we'll go ahead and cover first is, is that uh, Commissioner Berberick uh, resigned from the commission. So we wish him well and on his next adventure. So wanted to let you all know. Mm. All right, then we'll um, moving on to the Barn Owl Box Restoration uh, Boy Scout Eagle Project. So I'll turn it over to Brian uh, Ferrario. Ferrar 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 my apologies. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners, fellow staff. Uh, appreciate this great, great opportunity to talk about uh, the, the parks. My name is Brian Fiorio. Uh, for those who don't know me, Parks Division Supervisor, 29-year uh, employee for the Club of um, it's a great opportunity for us to talk about our Parks Division Barn Owl projects. We were approached by a young scout, Ditsha, come on up here, um, about completing his Eagle Scout project. So for those who don't, are unaware of our little program that we started about five years ago, we have 15 Barn Owl boxes throughout the trail system and park system. I usually talk too loud, so <laughs> sorry. Uh, we have we have about 15 owl boxes uh, located in our parks and trail system. Um, currently, right now, all 15 of them are occupied by barn owls, and uh, we were approached to do some renovation of some new boxes because some of them have been up there for a few years, and it was time to replace them. Um, so I'd like to introduce. Adisha, he's going to give his presentation on what he did for his project. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Aditya, as Mr. Fiora just said. And I'm from Troop 443, and I'm a senior at Foothill High School. And this is my uh, Eagle Scout project. Uh, so just to go over like the meeting team, uh, we, uh, Mr. Fiorio and Mr. Mitch helped from the Pleasanton uh, Parks Department. And uh, they've been like a really... Uh, great help in uh, mentoring me and providing me with like details to move forward with the project and how to like advance it and make it better. Uh, I also have uh, some uh, troop, uh, my troops uh, leaders, Mr. Midda and Mr. Chong, who've helped me uh, put this, these plans into action and get it approved by the Boy Scouts committee. Uh, and then I, I'm Aditya and then uh, some of the volunteers that helped me were my dad, uh, Abhishek, who's in the back over there, my sister, and then two scouts, uh, Shrihari and Tommy. 
So before we talk about the project, uh, I just wanted to give a little bit of information about the barn, barn owls themselves. So they generally have a lifespan of uh, around two years, oh, wow. and they usually uh, mate during the summer uh, months, April, May, and June. And uh, they uh, usually reproduce uh, between like four to six uh, babies. And uh, they feed on small animals such as mice and rats, which is why this project is important, which I'll get to in a little bit. Uh, so because the barn owl population has been going down over the past few years, so this project is important because it gives these barn owls a shelter to live in. population which has been increasing because they're really good hunters so they're able to take care of this uh, pr problem uh, fairly easily. Uh, there's a second part to this project that I also uh, have which is uh, applying mulch to the uh, or wood chips to the areas around the box installation and this allows uh, for the uh, weeds uh, to be the reduction of weeds and also uh, helps save like trap some water for the plants to retain some water for the plants. Uh, so the overall plan, so this uh, project took part, uh, place in the Burnell Community Park. Uh, so we started off by reviewing, going through the uh, six boxes that were in the park already and uh, seeing which ones had to be replaced. Uh, then we had to construct the boxes, uh, remove the old boxes and put place in the new ones and then apply the mulch into those areas. So this is just a little bit more information about like the construction uh, planning that went into this process. Uh, so we started off uh, just buying all the materials, assembling the boxes, and then we handed it over to Mr. Fiorio for the installation. So these are just some pictures that I'd taken during the construction process. Uh, this is like building like the uh, main uh, box. And then in these uh, pictures, we're just sanding it down, applying some final touches. And then the last step of the construction process was uh, staining it into this dark brown color so it blends into the environment a little bit more, looks a little bit more like a tree, kind of, which the owls usually nest in. Uh, so these are the finished, uh, the three finished owl boxes that I uh, created. And some of the challenges that I had was very, like, minimal. Uh, it was just, like, problems that I came across while constructing, like making that entrance hole that you see uh, on uh, the boxes. Uh, just getting that shape was kind of difficult. So we sort of like implemented a uh, mold that we could be used on the other two boxes. And then also just the wood pieces moving around uh, when we were screwing everything in. So the next step of the project was the cleaning and installation. So this uh, took place like in the park itself. Uh, we went through the uh, old boxes, cleaned out any like dust and uh, feathers that were already in there, and um, inspected for any damage, and then replaced the boxes that needed to be replaced. Uh, so these is just a couple of pictures from the uh, installation day itself, uh, where we install we're installing the brackets for the uh, new boxes to fit onto. Uh, these are just some like a comparison of like the old box and the new boxes on the very left hand side, and then just a couple of pictures of Mr. Mitch uh, helping clean out the boxes. And so these were the signs that we looked for when uh, going uh, when looking at these uh, looking through these boxes for the owls itself, uh, because we actually saw some owls flying out, and so we noticed that there was these fur balls around uh, the installation locations. There were also feathers around, so we were able to tell that whether there was an owl inside or not. And then these are just some pictures I had taken uh, of the owls flying out of the boxes. So this is probably like one of my favorite parts of the project, uh, seeing like the owls just fly out. Uh, and then the last part of the project was applying the mulch. Uh, so we, Mr. Fiorio and his team had uh, placed uh, piles of mulch all around at the six locations. And then me and my dad went through and we shoveled it around and made it even so that it was evenly distributed across that, like a 10 foot radius around the pole. And so these were just some of the pictures that we had taken during this time. And so as you, as you can see, like we were started off with these like piles of mulch and then made it into those circular radius around it. 
And so in conclusion, uh, we want, I hope to like continue uh, to help with this project, like going uh, back in the next few years and looking over these boxes, making sure that they're doing well, at least have a couple of owls in them. And then I want, like hopefully this project continues to grow to like the other parks in Pleasanton and allows for like more people, more scouts and other individuals in the community to bec uh, become uh, part of uh, the this uh, project and allows the uh, residents to help in the Pleasanton parks. Uh, and then lastly, I wanted to thank Mr. Fiorio for this opportunity uh, because he's been a great mentor so far and uh, he's helped with this project a lot and helped me like learn all these like leadership and communication skills that I hopefully will take with me to, for the rest of my Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Any questions? As Brian knows, I walk by two of those owl boxes every morning and never see any owl activity, so I presume they're fully nocturnal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we actually, this, this past year when we approached one of the boxes with the big aerial truck that you saw the picture of, they actually took off. And usually you have to kind of shake the box to get them to, to get out. They took off about 40 feet away from the pole, mm. which was kind of ironic. So, uh, but they're definitely heavily used, and, and they do. Uh, they they say that <clears throat> that owls, a single owl, will eat about 70 pounds of rodents a year. Mm. That's a lot of mice. Um, so it really helps to, you know, keep that rodent population down. So, it's been a great little project. Really appreciate all this help and, and uh, getting this taken care of. Right. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, may, I, I just want I want to make a comment. I'm just um, just blown away by this. You know your enthusiasm, and I see your dad behind you, and um, the the photographs that followed. I'm just overjoyed. Um, I just see the future of the city and, and our young people um, as so promising. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, um, next on the agenda, we'll go to matters of the commission. Uh, we'll start with agenda item number uh, four. Tonight, presenting item number four is Rachel Prater, our recreation manager who oversees civic arts and senior services and special events. Anything I'm missing? <laughs> okay. Oh, and public art as well. Good evening, commission. Thank you for having me here tonight. Tonight I'm here to present this next item before you, which is to recommend City Council accept donation of Hope and Promise mural fr and frame. Um, let's see. I do have an image of the artwork, which was also included in the packet up on the screen, but I'll go ahead and give you an overview of this item. So the Pleasanton Cultural Arts Council commissioned local artist Letta Eidelberg to create a mural that tells the story of Pleasanton Rotary Club International. The artwork highlights Rotary's key projects and initiatives, which again, you can see up on the screen. This project was made possible through two grants received by PCAC from the Pleasanton Rotary Club International. And in partnership with Nancy and Gary Harrington, PCAC and the Pleasanton Rotary Club International would like to donate this artwork to be displayed in a permanent freestanding metal frame at Rotary Park. So, up on the screen is an image of the location that we are looking at. I did want to note that this is not to scale, um, but the goal is that the mural will be seen from the street, so people driving by would be able to see it, and then, of course, um, along this walking path here. So the um, a little bit more about just the process for this project. The Public Art Selection Subcommittee, PASS, has reviewed this project and provided feedback. And then at the October 7th meeting, um, just last month, the Civic Arts Commission received this report as well, and they voted to recommend that the City Council accept the donation of the Hope and Promise mural and frame. So based on the information provided in the report, um, we are asking that the Parks and Recreation Commission um, recommend whether to accept the donation. And just wanted to highlight a couple of the benefits that are included um, in this report of accepting the piece, and that would be including enhancing public spaces and promoting civic engagement through art that celebrates the values of service, generosity, and humanitarianism. 
humanitarianism. The mural will visually represent the Pleasanton Rotary Club International's contributions, fostering a sense of pride and awareness within the community. So for the next steps with this item is with the recommendation from Parks and Rec the Recreation Commission, then this proposal would go to the City Council for final approval. Uh, we do have um, Les Duman here as well who can help with any questions, but I'd also be happy to take any questions from you. Thank you. All right, let's open it up for questions. We'll save comments till after, um, but any questions? Yes. You state that the um, print will have a lifetime timeline. Is, it, is there an understanding what that timeline is as far as before it's replaced? So typically with the temporary murals, it's about 10 years. 10 years. And will it always be a, uh, whatever replaces it will always be a, a print or a painting that's a rotary project or topics as opposed to something more community related? That's a great question. Yeah. So because it's in a rotary park and they've presented yeah. this item, that is um, what this item is focused on. We would come up with an agreement and a contract with Rotary um, and plan out what would be the next steps for when the artwork is no longer um, acceptable. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, we'll move into uh, public comment. So Les Duman, you have three minutes. Hello, everyone. I mean, it's. 20 after 8 already. I What's know. What's wrong with the schedule here? I know. Um, so um, just very quickly, this started three years ago, I think, and we've gone back and forth on the mural, the frame, and it's weather resistance and everything else, and I think everyone's satisfied with it, and Pleasant Culture Arts Council is happy to be kind of orchestrating and managing the whole project, and um, if anyone has any specific questions, I'm here for that. And it's, uh, again, we're glad the Rotary put up the money for this. We're glad the Harringtons put up the money for this. And we're glad to place more artwork in the city. For those who may not be aware, there's two murals that are on the backside of the um, uh, building on Bernal next to um, the uh, uh, aquatic park. And those murals were also um, managed and curated and presented by PCAC along with the city for designing the framing and such. Any questions? Um, sorry, <clears throat> I have a question. Um, is there a plan in place um, if this was vandalized or anything like that? Um, is there like a, a budget or something? I'm sorry, a budget for? Like, um, <laughs> if, there was, if it was vandalized, I don't know how to frame that. Oh, if it were vandalized? Better. Yeah. Oh, okay. so we've done everything good. The other murals have been in place for two years now. Nobody's touched them. Um, so the artwork itself is painted, and then it has a sort of anti-graffiti clear coat on it. So theoretically, it's easily cleaned. But we really haven't had any issues in the city of Pleasanton with, I don't think, graffiti on artwork uh, that I know of. We had a structure. We have? We had a structure destroyed on Main Street by the bank last year. Oh, uh, well, they better not mess with ours. Um, <laughs> the answer so is yes. The answer, Sorry, Les. The, the answer is yes. There's yeah. protective measures in place. There is, um, a, the general fund would support that. We have a, a contractor who we call if there's any issues, um, and we would support that. Okay, thank you. And the artist said that they would also help in anything if that was required. Okay. And Excellent. Anything else? All right, seeing none. Thank right, you so I'm much. I'm off to Pleasant Community Concert Band. I don't mean to rush off, but I'm doing that. No. Perfect. Um, then do we have a motion to put this on the table before we get to comments? So and, moved. All right, so motion's on the table. Um, to recommend this to the City Council to accept donations of, of Hope and Promise mural and frame. Do I have a second? Second. Excellent. Okay, comments. I, I, I'll just make a comment. I think it's a great project, and um, I look forward to seeing more projects like this. These are projects that don't cost the city anything up front, and that's outstanding, and I love Love the uh, the design of the artwork. All right. Any any other comments to be made? I just wanted to say thank you uh, to the Rotary and to the Harringtons for once again expressing their uh, overwhelming generosity, which has been great for the city. Mm -hmm. 
I would say ditto. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so let's take a vote. We'll do a roll call. Commissioner Alfaro? Um, yes. Commissioner Deckard? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner Imadi? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. And Chair Brown? Yes. Thank you. Okay, motion passes. We'll move on to item number five. A recommendation for the City Council uh, on to adopt field um, rental fees for co-sponsored user groups. So over to... Over to you. We're doing a quick swap. No You're problem. going to have Recreation Manager Aaron Bueno uh, providing this report to you this evening. I'm just going to go sneak and get his name tag. On the desktop? It's, it's in front of me. Good evening, Vice Recreation Commission. My name is Aaron Bueno. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, can you hear me okay? No? Push. Now. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, thank you for your time. And and uh, feedback. So we are here to discuss, yes, Anya? I thought you said something, I'm sorry. Uh, the co-sponsor user group field fees. <clears throat> it's on the agenda tonight. We will look at the background, the benchmark of neighbor, neighboring agencies, the NBS peer review and cost analysis, recommendation, estimated city revenues, and any questions and comments you may have. <clears throat> The city of Pleasanton provides multiple sports fields and outdoor spaces for athletic use. Co-sponsored co groups are the primary users of the city's athletic fields for a variety of sports league practices and games throughout the year. They also host uh, additional programming, including tournaments, camps, and clinics. <clears throat> per our updated co-sponsorship requirement, uh, the commission reviewed last year, an organization must re meet certain requirements to qualify. These would include such things as a 501c3, uh, participant residency percentage, um, among others. Currently, the city has eight co-sponsored groups, and they are boys and girls soccer, boys and girls lacrosse, football, cricket, baseball, and softball. Historically, the co-sponsored co athletic organizations have been granted priority field use with no costs for the field, for field rentals. <clears throat> to help offset the rising cost of field maintenance and supplies and meet the city's cost recovery goals, staff explored fee field rental fees. Staff conducted a benchmark study of five neighboring municipalities, co-sponsorship field rental fees to understand the market rates. <clears throat> field rental fees schedules for co-sponsorship programs are standard, pr standard practice throughout neighboring cities and California. Table one shows the results of the benchmark study. Agencies included were Dublin, Fremont, Livermore Area Recreation and Parks Department, San Ramon, and Walnut Creek. <clears throat> As you can see, there are two different rates for natural grass and synthetic turf. Uh, this usually accounts for the turf replacement costs, uh, which usually is about every 10 years. <clears throat> In addition, staff conducted an internal cost analysis to better understand the full cost of maintaining and administering these fields for the co-sponsor groups. Financial consultant NBS was hired to provide a professional review of staff's internal cost analysis and provide a memo outlining their findings. This memo, attachment one, includes the benchmark study analysis and the fully burdened costs of maintaining and administering fields. <clears throat> In collaboration with NBS, staff determined actual costs per year and developed the following costs per hour for field maintenance and administration. That is $49.96 for natural grass, $79.58 for artificial turf. Again, this artificial turf hourly rate includes the turf replacement. 
In accordance with the city's master fee schedule, which is attachment two, co-sponsored groups are subject to fees up to 25% cost recovery of actual costs. Given the actual cost for field maintenance, replacement, and administration, the neighboring city's fees, and applying the current master fee schedule's cost recovery model, staff recommends beginning with a three-year field rental fee schedule for co-sponsored groups beginning July 1, 2025 for league practices and games and upon city council approval for tournaments, clinics, and camps. You may note that the begin date for the synthetic turf is November 1st, 2026. During the construction of the artificial turf fields at Brunel Community Park in 2014, a memorandum of understanding, <coughs> attachment three, was created in collaboration with the participating co-sponsored groups fundraising efforts for the Brunel, Brunel Community Park fields. This MOU allows eligible sports groups to use these fields without fees from the city through October 31st, 2026. Beginning November 1st, 2026, Brunel Community Park field rental fees will begin in accordance with fiscal year 26-27 rates for synthetic turf. Table three shows estimated revenues over the proposed three-year periods based on past field use allocations. It also shows two additional three-year periods at increased cost recovery percentages. As we see, option one, 5%, 10%, 15. Option two, 10, 15, 20. And the third, 15, 20, 25%. While more beneficial to the city, these higher cost recovery numbers represent a more significant change for the user groups who have historically not paid field fee rentals. This lower cost recovery method allows the fees to be implemented in a way that is not overly burdensome to the organization or the participants. All of these options reflect a gradual increase in not only the percentage, but also the number of fields that will be assessed for fees. We feel that this is a very nice introduction uh, to this process. Field fees will not be collected for registrations prior to July 1. So that includes the seasons, practices, and games for that season. Some groups are in the midst, are already completing their spring registrations, um, or they have set their price points and, and are preparing for their promotional material. This allows for groups to prepare next season's pricing and budgets accordingly. Uh, synthetic fields, on top of this, and synthetic fields will not be assessed to eligible groups until November 1st, 2026. So that would include all of fall 2025 and up through October 31st, 2026, which is the majority of the fall season. That would leave three weeks of November for the most part. I'd be happy to answer any questions or comments you may have. Thank you. All right, we'll open up just for start with questions. Anybody would like to kick us off? Yes. I have a few. Um, I was wondering, oops, do we um, provide field prep such as um, raking the batter box, the mound, <coughs> grooming the traffic areas around the bases? We have ongoing prep, uh, ongoing field maintenance throughout the season. So we do take care of the infields. We do uh, provide a lot of maintenance, and um, uh, I, I think Giacomo is here in attendance, but we do, uh, for all sports, during certain areas of wear and tear, um, we do give it much attention. However, the dragging of baseball lines, um, the lining of soccer fields, uh, the movement of, let's say, goal, goals for certain matches, that is up to the individual clubs. Okay. And, uh, but there's no special prep fees that are applied to the teams? There are none. Okay. Um, then another question I had. The report indicates that the co-sponsored organizations use the field <clears throat> for additional programming, um, such as tournaments, which presumably includes non-Pleasanton-based teams. So is there a fee for tournament use of the fields by the co-sponsored groups? At this, at this point, it would be the same. The, the, the proposed dollar per hour for, f for each field. Oh, currently? I'm sorry. Currently, there is none. No. 
Okay. I apologize. Okay, that's okay. Um, and then I was just wondering, just for background, because I don't, I, I know, I know about Bernal Park, but I, I don't know all the details about the funding of it. Um, and on page three of five of the report, you alluded to the MOU with the co-sponsored groups that allows them to use the fields at no cost through October of 26. I was just wondering, how much did the groups fundraise for those fields, and what was the total cost of the fields? They fundraised about $2 million, um, and the total cost of the fields, Giacomo, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was $16 million or $18 million. Thank you. That's all I have. Giacomo can give us an exact number. I think that was the cost for the entire park project, including the oak woodland, the pathways, the playgrounds, everything else. Yeah, so maybe not just for the fields themselves. I think it was, <coughs> it was about $10 million project before the construction started. They started with an of, estimation of $10 million. Mm -hmm. Out of that, $2 million was the gap that was. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Following up on um, um, Joanne's question, so if a, if a group did need to, to do um, the effort of doing the lines or moving the goalie boxes, that would then be under the normal hourly rate then, correct? You know, that is a good topic of conversation. At the moment, um, they actually paint and move at different hours. Uh, I know some of the groups have a third party that does this. Um, and so I, I, I don't have an exact answer for that, but I would imagine that um, we would allow them to get on the field when that company can uh, do their business um, so that the fields are ready for use. Um, that would probably be a conversation that I would like to have with the groups. Some that uh, I just not have the muscle to do some of it. Sure, that, so. yes. It's, it's very effective to have uh, some of these groups have it really uh, well wired. And, uh, you know, these, these the, the, for instance, the painting of the lines, uh, they've been, the, the individuals have been doing it for years. They know the park staff very well. Um, there's really good communication. Uh, so uh, they come at different times so that it is ready for that use. But. The additional answer to that, Chuck, would be, or Commissioner Deckert, I apologize, um, would be that um, any time that the user groups are reserving that field space, they would be paying the hourly rate. So they would be paying the hourly rate when that field is out of use for other people because it's being prepped. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Yes. Yeah, I have a two-part question. Um, financial consultant, NBS, how many hours did they work and what was our charge? They did a much broader city project um, that was handled out of the finance department. I don't have that number for you today, but this was just a small component of a much larger city fee study. Can you get that information? Yes. Thank you. Was there a second question? I thought That's you said it. there was That's two. It. Oh. There was two parts on that. Um, how many hours they worked and what was the cost? Correct. That's all. I had one more. I have to remember what it is. <laughs> um, while well, she's while you're thinking about your question, I just uh, it's thirty dollars more an hour to maintain the artificial turf fields than the grass fields. Like it it uh, it includes the cost of the replacement of the artificial turf. Yeah, so while you may save some on water. It is a large amount every 10 years to keep it in its in its state. So it is replacement. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's, so That's it's, one. okay. So yes. water is factored into the, the, the is in the $50 an hour, yes. but the, okay. But then there also the replacement of it. Okay. Right. All right. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I remembered my question. Um, so um, presumably there are other, um, other fees that Parks and Recreation charges, why are why did you break it out to co-sponsored groups? Are, are there going to be others coming in the master fee schedule? The master fee schedule 
allows us to charge certain percentage cost recovery rates for different groups. Um, the reason this one is coming to you, normally this would be administrative. This fits within the master fee schedule that's been approved by city council. But this body and city council, because we have not historically charged these groups, really wanted to see the plan on how we're going to be implementing this. And so that's why it's coming to you. It's, it's a, generally an administrative process for us, but this is really more of just a community conversation. Okay, and do you know how long, um, thank you. Do you know how long um, we've been um, not charging for the fields? We have never charged. In the history of Pleasanton, we have not charged these groups to use the fields, and this is at least since the 80s. Um, I don't know prior to that, but we know ever since Ken Mercer was constructed, Bernal Community Park, um, Val Vista fields, they, we've just never. Students? 70. Okay. That was one of our updates from last year. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You bet. You're welcome. Any additional questions otherwise? All right. Um, I don't have any speaker cards. I don't see anybody else needing to speak. So I will move into, um, do I have a motion to, to move this? Do we have comments? That'll go after we oh, do after, the motion. After we vote. After we, after we move the, um, motion. the motion to put it on the table, then we have comments about it, and then we vote for it. So do I have... Yes. Yes, so so you move um, to recommend to city council to adopt field rental fees for co-sponsored user groups. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All right, open for comments. Got it. Okay. So I didn't, uh, I thought that was a given, but okay. I see, I see where you're saying that. So, so to, we'll recommend option one. We'll put that out there and then we can have comments. And if we want to amend it, we can. All right. Comments on option one to send to the city council. So option one on this chart here, that is this three year um, roll out. Is that correct? Is that what we're talking about? Option one is the one that starts with $2.50 an hour for the natural turf fields. So it starts at a 5% right. cost okay. recovery rate and goes up from there. And so that, that's in conjunction with this chart here. Correct. Correct. Um, comments, right? We're in comments mode? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Comments, yep. I, I think it's very generous. And I would actually even argue that under the current situation with uh, the failure of PP, that it's most likely gonna fail, that these numbers are very, very generous. And 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 actually, um, city council may look at it and wanna revisit this. So I would, I would say yes, for sure. And I say with prejudice that it may have to be looked at by city council. That's, that's all I have on that. Okay, other comments? Please. Um, I was. I, 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 it isn't clear to me why we aren't raising the fle fees at least to um, a midpoint of our neighboring cities. Because um, despite the fact that, um, you know, in 2021, the Census Bureau ranked Pleasanton as the 32nd wealthiest community in the country. And I know that not everybody that participates in sports can afford to do so. But we also have resources um, within the city and within some of these organizations for financial aid to help those players that can't afford it. So um, I think... I agree. I think that um, it's very generous, and we should be looking at. It, it's been free forever, and so, and I know that it's a dramatic change to go from free to paying anything, and it's hard to to do that. But I think um, the time has come where we're going to have to take a look at that sort of thing. Other 
other comments on option one? If there, actually, actually, I would like to open this up a little bit. Um, so, obviously, these numbers weren't put, weren't put together, you know, in a week. Um, so, I'm assuming that this was put together under the premise that PP would pass. And was there a thought that there was a backup in place if PP did not pass because we're in that mode now? And these numbers look very, very low. The numbers are low. Um, these numbers were not, we, we started this process well before PP was ever considered. So this has been a multi-year project. We've been in a lot of close communication with the co-sponsored user groups. And where staff's recommendation came is really just to honor the relationship. We've been giving them free space for a long time and to start to introduce this slowly in a way that doesn't negatively impact them and their programs because we value youth sports in this community and um you know these these groups are nonprofits providing this service and so we really wanted to just honor that balance and you know eventually get to a point where we are in line with our neighboring cities that were you know benchmarked against standards that we do in most of our recreation programs. So for most of our recreation programs, we are benchmarked with our neighboring cities. We're right in the ball game with them. But because we have historically not charged, this was a way to just kind of introduce this slowly. In some of the neighboring cities, when they started their fee process, also might have started on the lower side of the street and moved up to where they are today. Well, I will say this. Um, we've moved to, in every other month, Parks and Rec formula. And this is the kind of thing that falls through the cracks. We would have benefited greatly by having another meeting where we could have discussed this item or something before the vote took place. Let me finish. Okay. Okay. Um, I was a strong proponent for keeping our schedule of having monthly meetings because I think there's always things that are going on. And now we're in a special space where there's a tremendous gap between revenue in and expenses. And so for us to continue to go on, and we will, it looks like we're just going to continue to go on with this every other month. And there are so many things on our plate and the plate, the business of the city, that I see that it is irresponsible to continue on that course. That's my point. Okay, I was just going to share with you that the, that is a minimum number of meetings, six per year. We can always add meetings if there are items that need to be discussed. Okay, and, and, but I, I, I don't want to go back and forth on this. There's, there's, I, I just have the sense that there's always things that we need to discuss. And I said that before, previously, that there, we always, we're always in a situation where there's, in the business world, it works differently because you're constantly looking at what's happening minute by minute, day to day. We have a, an, an agenda item to agree on the dates, so we can do, we can maybe, I, I just maybe table stand that by my we words, get to that. what I just said. All right. All right, on the, on the motion on the table regarding, um, uh, regarding the fees to send to the city, city council, um, we have option one. Does anybody else have any comments or would like to make an amendment? See, uh, I kind of echo uh, with my fellow commissioners about the option one. I don't uh, with the with the huh? no. What I'm saying is I'm agreeing with their sentiments. What they're echoing because because this first year it's going to get about forty thousand dollars and second year eighty one and the amount of time and effort it's going to take it's going to take us negative, not positive with this option one with the amount of resources we need to spend cutting the invoices and and maintaining the records of what is used and all that. So I just want to share that kind of a sentiment and echo with my fellow commissioners. Okay. Uh, anybody else have a comment? Is there any amendments that want to be made, or are we are we okay to vote on having pushing forward with option one? I don't really know. Okay. I don't really know how to go about it, but I 
I can't. I don't feel comfortable with option one because I think two fifty an hour is way too low, and even seven fifty an hour. I mean, we're coming in on the on the um, um, on the um, the faux turfs at less than fifty percent of what the lowest uh, turf is is priced at in Dublin in in our neighboring cities I and mean, we're not even coming in at half so I I couldn't support um, option one but what other options do we have yeah on this on page f uh, three there's this graph here and there's different options that are here Option one, option two, option three. And does it tell us what the field, per field uh, cost is, though? Yes. It's two fifty. Five dollars and ten fifty. I would. Do you have that? Some. It's on page eighteen of your packet, um, page two of five of this agenda report, um, and it goes over to page three of five, which is nineteen of fifty six. So it talks about the. Um, the different prices at 5%, 10%, 15%. Um, that's the option one recommendation. And then you can see the graph below that. Um, the option one was 5, 10, and 15 over three years. And then it bumps up to 10, 15, 20 over three years. And then the third option is 15, 20, 25. And the 25 gets us to the top of our current fee schedule um, for where this current fee is landing in our master fee schedule in that zero to 25% bucket. I think uh, a little low. So, are, are you saying that we should look at maybe option two as a, instead of option one to recommend? Somebody has to make a, a different motion then. So, so it do do. So to to then to negate option one and then to look at option two. So, um, if they. No, we're going to amend it. We'd say um, somebody moves to amend the motion to strike option one and add option two, and then we'll vote on that if that's what we would like to do. And uh, can we go between option one and two? We don't. We need to stick with this, with that option alone. So find a, a midpoint point between, between one and so two. So it'd be option one B. Yes. That's not actually here, but it's something we'd have to actually put the numbers in. So okay. it'd be something like sixty. And then whatever the midpoint between 121 and 226, and 244 and 326. So in in this instance, you're looking at um, right like a seven and a half percent cost recovery rate for year one, um, rather than right if you're saying between option one and option two, the difference, the delta there would put you at seven and a half percent cost recovery. And then the difference between 10 and 15 is going to put you at 12.5% cost recovery. The difference between 15 and 20% in the third year is going to put you at 17.5% cost recovery. It's increasing 2.5%. Correct. It's basically over. And if that's what we'd like to do, we can amend the motion to do that. Are you just. The in between doesn't happen. So we, we are recommending a 5% a year increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we can certainly, whatever the motion is, I'm just sharing that that's, that delta is 2.5% between mm -hmm. option one and option two. And Chuck, I've read that the rate doesn't stay the same as year one. It does increase to on year, mm -hmm. year three under, under option one. Well, we see so, that. So we'd like to uh, amend the motion to be first year 7.5%. The second year being twelve and a half percent, and the third year to be seventeen and a half percent. Is that what we I think, are? I think that's that's what that's we would like. Definitely to better than discuss. what we're seeing here. All right. So then, um, so then, I need a motion to uh, amend. I need a motion to amend the motion to have those new figures at seven point five, twelve point five, and seventeen point five. Sorry, I have a comment. Okay. I think uh, with uh, to your point, uh, PP being not passing, I think it's going to come to our table again, saying that if any services need to be cut from a from Park's perspective, 
and it's going to come back to the table saying that we either we want to revisit this and increase immediately and support those services or sports user groups are ready to take the cut from the services perspective because something need to cut at this time because we are expecting that what is going to happen right we don't know so but i we, do want to share that you know if measure pp does not pass um we will most likely be bringing forward and even if it does pass our master fee schedule um, needs to be updated so we will be bringing that forward to you and looking at those buckets um, and moving programs around in those cost recovery buckets trying to generate more revenue for programs so that will be coming to you um, probably spring to summer of 25. And this is just a recommendation to send to the city council. So um, we're not, you know, they could change it themselves. Sure. We just want to make sure we put forth our best effort here. So um, what would, would um, is there someone who would like to move an amendment? I would to like be, to move that amendment. Okay. And do I have a second? on the amendment of having it be 7.5, 12.5, and 17.5. This is just to amend the motion. I, I'm sorry, I had a question yes. on that. Um, mm -hmm. Is it because you felt that it was too conservative to do the 5%? Yeah, or, too, too relaxed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We can, <clears throat> yeah, I think we should, I think it's, it's almost embarrassing that okay. we're not asking organizations to step up a little bit more if we look at our bottom place which is Dublin it's still way below I think we can do a lot better um, and sorry was there any way that um, I don't know just looking at the, the bar graph here that this could be done in a way that's more exponential rather than just like an, a gradual like 5% increase is that possible anything's possible <laughs> that's right. Anything financially, yeah. But I think that's this, we're looking at a simple, a simple piece right now. You know, within the next five minutes to do. And, and again, I think that um, the city council might even change that. So I think it's, yeah, it's about might putting sharpen forward it more. what we what we think might be the best uh, a best approach right now. But as I think we're sending change, a signal that says that you know we think that the option one is a little bit too low and maybe two is maybe a little bit much. So. Can I, I tell like you that, what these numbers would be based on your new percentages? Uh, yes. So um, for fiscal year 25-26 at 7.5% uh, recovery, it would be $3.75. It would bump up to $6.25 um, in the next fiscal year and eight seventy five in the following year. And I did not do the artificial turf numbers yet, but that, um, that's where you would be landing there. Yeah. Sounds fair. Okay, so can I have a vote on the amendment? That that's what we would like, that we want to have the motion? Do we want to do a roll call? Okay. Commissioner Alfaro? Yes. Commissioner Deckard? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner Imadi? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. And Chair Brown? Yes. Okay, so we've amended the motion. So, is there any other comments now that we are we are looking to? Uh, I'm just going to read the motion. Um, we are looking to recommend to the city council to adopt the field rental fees for the co-sponsored user group um, to be in the first year 7.5, second year 12.5, third year 17.5. Is there any other comments on that motion that we will be rec uh, that recommendation to the city council? All right. If there is no other um, comments, then why don't we do a roll call on that on this agenda item? Back to you. Oh wait. What? Yes. What? I thought we did that. Okay. No, that was on the amendment to amend it. And now we're just voting on to actually send it to the rec to the uh, city council. Yeah. Do that. Commissioner Alfaro? Yes. Commissioner Deckard? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner Imadi? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. And Chair Brown? Yes. Thank you. All right. 
Great, so um, we'll close item number five and we'll move on to item number six. And this will be Recreation Manager Aaron Bueno once more. Well, hello, good evening. Thank you once again for your time and consideration. Uh, this item is the Municipal Code 13.08 Parks and Recreation Facilities Updates. And uh, we will follow the background, the Municipal Code updates themselves, and any questions and comments you may have. <clears throat> so currently, the Municipal Code 13.08 allows for non-permitted field users, user groups of under 25 people with the advent of small privatized youth sports clubs and various athletic trainings, portions of this municipal code no longer effectively ensure these small groups and no non-co-sponsored groups are required to obtain field use permits, pay associated fees, and own proper insurance policies. This update aims to close these loopholes that allow for these unauthorized users. <clears throat> Attachment one shows the proposed updates, uh, and I believe it's redlined um, in your packet. They include a definition in the definition section of organized activity as any number of people organized through a corporation, club, federation, union, association, or other group which sponsors or arranges any activity. <clears throat> We've added provisions against holding, conducting, participating in, or attending organized or structured activities, practices, or games without a written permit. <clears throat> We've removed the 25 or more persons affiliated in any way clause. We've clarified the need for approved use permits through the city rental process. And it clarified the need to obtain an, app an approved city use permit for organized activities, as defined above, in neighborhood parks. Upon the approved updates, these groups will obtain an approved field use permit through the city rental process and be assessed regular rental fees according to their respective rental categories. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. All right, we'll open it up for questions. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. So help me understand this. Um, I live near Withrush Park, and it's a community park, and we have people that just informally <clears throat> set up practices and activities and so forth. What, What's going on? I'm not sure what's, what, what, what you're talking about. Yeah, great question. Uh, that is one of the pieces that we really work through to try to define. Um, you know, parks are public places. We love the public to use them. Uh, you know, there we have businesses that gather at lunchtime and, and go get active at lunch, and that's what it's for. Uh, what we've found in the recent years are a number of private, uh, say, travel ball teams, or um, clubs that are spinoffs from somebody else. Uh, they have uh, coaches, um, schedules. Um, uh, they could have an organized umbrella or work through some insurance policy of such. Um, they have officials at games. Oftentimes there's games out there. Uh, so it's those types. So that it's we're something like at. a pony league that operates on a Sunday. And you're talking, you know, it's a, it's not little league, it's pony league, or it's travel ball, right? So that's that's really we're not talking about, you know, neighbors that come with a cooler and they're going to set up a volleyball court and just have a right an impromptu game. That's, that's what just we, not scheduled. It's not. So you're talking about organizations organized. that are that are that are slipping through the cracks. That's right. That happen just, to be under yeah. 25 people. Okay. And which is pretty much any single team. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's what I want to make sure we're clear. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Along so. that line of what Mike described, uh, maybe more of a gray area is, uh, I do daily walks every day through many of our uh, neighborhood parks, and I see pop-up uh, yoga classes. Um, right. That is a problem. Yeah. So we do not allow any of our city fields to be used for private gain it is counter to how is that are you looking for individuals to call 
Animals. People do call, and we try to, you know, if we know that someone's doing something every Thursday at 7 a.m., we'll send our staff out there, code enforcement out there, just to let people know, hey, here's how you can get a permit. We'd love to have you join our team, right? Let's let's work on this together. And so we really are trying to capture um, that issue because it is a significant issue for us. Because yoga is not a, um, a league. There was nothing that would be considered a league. It's also something that a yoga teacher might not be able to afford the expense of going to having the yoga in a senior center or whatever that is, and they're just looking for somewhere to have their yoga classes um, in, a, in a park is somewhere where they feel is an easy one to, to work with. Yeah, but if they are charging fees yeah. okay. for people to come. So there's an issue right now in San Diego and the La Jolla area, La Jolla, and on the, the cliff sides. You may be familiar yes. with that. And it's it's becoming quite a firestorm. So, um, so you're seeing the difference here between an impromptu gathering that's not a charge for our situation, right? And that's okay versus somebody who's actually making a business. Correct. Okay. Right. If a group of neighbors want to go out there and do right. yoga together, great. We have a group of people who like to practice um, a traditional Chinese dance with swords. Um, they're just people getting together. Okay. Um, there's yeah. no financial gain. There's no that. financial gain, right? That's what we're trying to define here is it, it's not just groups over 25 <laughs> that we want to, we really want to define those people who are using the resources regularly. They're advertising it. They're collecting money for it. Making and business out of it. Yeah. Exactly. Because what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have the right insurance documents. We want to make sure we have the right permits um, and that we're covering all of our bases okay. and collecting okay. fees where appropriate as well. Okay. I may add also that there is a statement regarding the um, uh, the inability to use without uh, up for private for private private businesses private lessons private mentions private in one of the one of these statements in the in the um, I don't have it in front of me I apologize in this meeting code uh, it does state that they are prohibited private classes private lessons. Okay. Um, how much is the permit fee? It depends on where they fall in our master fee schedule. Okay. And so different groups, right, for a private organization that's not local, um, they're going to be in the 100% cost recovered. So you're going to see that full cost being charged. Um, you know, if they're a local nonprofit, then they're going to be in that category. So it's really going to depend on where they fall in that fee schedule. We currently have four categories. Mm -hmm. And they're co-sponsored groups, plus 10 nonprofits, plus 10 residents, and all other nonprofits, and then non-residents and businesses. So gradually increases. So I have a couple of questions. Please. So, so are we, how do we, how are we, how are we going to police this? We are um, going to police it the same as we do now, right? It's really going to be um, if we see something, we're going to talk to people. If a community member lets us know it's happening, we're going to talk to people. If we know it's happening, we're going to talk to people. Um, we're going to let them know about our permit process. We're going to be very kind, respectful, and 90% um, of the time, people just didn't know and they're willing to get the permits. Um, we already have the prohibition of private businesses using our parks for free, so we, we already do this work. Um, as much as we can. We're not going to catch everything. We're not going to increase staffing to enforce this, but we will, you know, especially the people who use the same space weekly or bi-weekly or um, on a regular schedule, we can connect with them and talk with them. Would there be a plan to call law enforcement? Um, no. I mean, if we needed to, we would, but we don't typically need to call law enforcement in these cases. Usually people are very compliant. They just don't know. Well, that, let's uh, talk about a scenario. Let's talk about somebody who is defiant and refuses to change. They meet every Thursday or whatnot. W what's the city's position? We have not discussed that, so I, I, I discuss haven't that. discussed it with the police department to know what we would do. Well, we should discuss that. That should be something that, because that's this a This is already, but what, what you're asking about is already a violation of the Muni Code, so we're already but doing this work. you're asking us to, to make decisions based on what can very well happen. So, And I think it's fair for us to have that discussion and not just 
Oh, absolutely. I'm just letting you know what we currently do because we already enforce a lot of this. Um, so. But you, even I, I don't know. I don't know what happens. I don't know if law enforcement is called and you know there's a scene that all of a sudden We haven't happens. ever had a need to call law enforcement or have a scene. Well, see, you know what? I'm bringing see, it see, up. Mike, why, why that is not happening is I, I want to ask that follow-up question. How often do we monitor now? Because uh, last time during the discussion, we talked about somebody monitoring the sports user group usage itself and i was told we don't have people and it is self kind of reporting need to happen from the sports user group and there's nobody available to go and monitor who's using what space in the city and now i'm hearing that we do have a monitor like a, we do monitor the usage of this park is what i'm saying no we don't monitor we address things as they come to our attention um, we do occasionally for the co-sponsor groups um, and, you know, just to check the fields, we'll do, you know, occasional field audits to see are people on the fields they've reserved, are people on fields they haven't reserved that we can talk to. So we do staff up to do that occasionally with our, with our team. Um, but no, we do not monitor. Even we, if we pass the municipal code, unless somebody calls, we are not going to enforce. If we part. see it, we will enforce. If someone calls us and lets us know, we will enforce. There was a situation, um, I was aware of this last year, or two years ago, I got a call from a friend of mine who had the permit to play at the uh, uh, Vista Park. And uh, they came to the park and somebody was else in the cart, they wouldn't leave. Um, they weren't part of our co-sponsor group. And, um, so I called Heidi, I think, or somebody from her department, and they sent somebody from from department over. It was easily resolved, and oh, I'm sorry. It was easily resolved, and after discussion, especially when they saw somebody official that showed up, and the, the group left uh, very quietly. So. So, um, so. Uh the qu question would be then that, I mean, this municipal code update is really just to give you some backing when you go and potentially have those conversations. It's not uh, it's not for going to go get additional fees from people. I think it's just That's to correct. We're really trying to close loopholes um, and just clarify, you know, a lot of a lot of what was written is quite old, right? Um, and just making it a little bit more modern to what modern activity looks like, what modern sports groups look like. Um, and what we're seeing. So we, we've tried to make it clearer and easier to um, enforce, but it's not, it's not a major change. All right. Can I continue with my questions? Absolutely, <clears throat> please. So, so we are saying that uh, this is, this is, we feel that this is going to be an organized activity where through the club or association or group of sponsors, is it what it is? My question is like, how do you differentiating a pickup game from a community members on a, on a good weather day, getting together and trying to play, and they are below 25, and somebody is reporting, hey, somebody is playing. Are we, are we in that situation, what are, how are we going to react? I'm just trying to grasp what are we going to do? Or what, what is the difference we are trying to do? So if, if someone reported that someone was organized playing an activity, we'd go out and talk to them. If they said, oh, it's just a pickup game, we'll say, great, that's awesome. If you ever want to use the field more regularly, we have a permit process, we would just connect with them and talk with them. Okay. We know many of the, many of the groups using right now that are outside of this uh, this municipal code. And it has been very cordial. Um, some of them have been interested and have actually pursued uh, a permit. Um, others have found that this is in the muni code and that they don't actually, they're under the radar because of this. Um, so yes, we will go out there, have a conversation with them, hand them business cards, um, uh, you know, speak to staff. And uh, it, it has been, we know them. It's very, been very, very pleasant, and I think uh, you know it starts with that having a good approach, and and um, you know it's it's fantastic they they're using, and we just want to make sure that they're using the right way, um, paying their fair share, and uh, responsible along the way. Okay, 
Uh, and uh, other question is, uh, this is uh, this includes the neighborhood parks also as part of this change. Is what we are proposing? What this does is it clarifies that we currently use neighborhood parks for co-sponsor groups. So it allows for that use. Um, in the Muni code before, it didn't make that clear that neighborhood parks could be allocated. But how many neighborhood parks we are allocating for the field users, co-sponsor groups? Uh, there are there are a few, and they are mentioned in your packet. Um, we have, let's see, whoops, I just dropped something. Let me check. My understanding, like, uh, let me rephrase my definition or my understanding and mm -hmm. help me validate. Neighborhood parks are those parks which doesn't have a restroom. Is one of them. but one, yes, that is valid. But one, I've been told. So uh, Muirwood, Muirwood is a neighborhood park. I've been told, but it is listed as Muirwood community, so I'm, I'm unclear about that. But Creekside, Orloff, Hanson, Harvest Park, Del Prado, Tawny, Woodthrush, uh, those have all been used in the past. Doesn't mean they're used every season, but they have had something used out there in the past. But Harvest Park, do we call it as a community neighborhood park? Harvest Park is a neighborhood park. It's my, neighbor, it's my park. Orloff, Hanson, Harvest Park, Del Prado, Tawny, Wood Thrush, and Upper Bernal are neighborhood parks. The reason we started allocating these parks was multifold. The first one was there just wasn't sufficient daylight space for people to practice. And then the secondary one was a lot of these kids and coaches live in one neighborhood and they didn't want to drive across town. And it made sense for them to practice there. And so we allowed that use, and over time, um, it's become you know as needed. Those are not the first spaces that we allocate, but we do allocate them to meet the demands of our youth sports community. Okay. And other question I have is on page number forty-four, the section thirteen, eight and one forty. It says include directors designee as additional person able to issue permits. Can you help me understand what is that? So that just means that I don't have to do that all the time. So it could be our sports team um, who issues the permits. So it, you know, it didn't st strictly state that it could be the director or the designee. So if I designate our sports supervisor to be the one who does the permits, then that's the person who can assign permits. It doesn't have to all fall on me. And if I may add, or designee was already uh, a piece of the many pieces of the municipal code. We just made it uniform throughout. Okay, thank you. That's all from my side. All right, any other questions? All right, um, I don't have any speaker cards for any public comments, so we can move. Um, should we go ahead and create a motion for this? I'll make a motion that we recommend the City Council approve the update to the Municipal Code 1306 for the Park and Rec Recreation Facilities. Great, do we have a second? I second. Excellent. All right. Comments. Um, yeah, I would. You know, I, I'm just uncomfortable with some of the conversation about when somebody calls. So it, you know, it's the whole idea of the kind of snitching on neighbors, and that just makes me feel very uncomfortable um, because that can go down a, sl a slippery slope of I don't like. A group out there because of the way they look not necessarily what they're doing and it can get very quick into that space so that makes me feel very uncomfortable because then it goes into a profiling of groups I'll make that clear so I, I want us to really think about this seriously about making these amendments and um, and and this almost it's almost a really comfortable sense that when people call. And I think that that makes, makes me very nervous because where that can go is a very dark place. My point made. All right. Other comments? Are we... Ready to vote? Anybody else have any comments that they want to make? All right. Uh, all right, so we'll do a roll call. Commissioner Alfaro? Yes. Commissioner Deckard? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner Imadi? Yes. 
Commissioner Vickers? No. Call Chair Brown. Yes. Thank you. All right, motion passes. All right, so that was item six handled. All right, next we are moving on to item number seven. That is um, uh, to approve the Parks and Recs Commission short-term work plan priorities uh, for the rest of the 2024-2025 year, fiscal year. All right. Great, thank you. So what this is is just a compilation of what we talked about last meeting. Um, putting down just the items that we believe we can bring to you um, over the next several months prior to the next fiscal year. Um, we will also be working on a new commission work plan um, probably in the beginning of uh, next calendar year um, for the following fiscal year. But this work plan that's presented to you on page one of item seven, which is page 48 of your packet, um, talks about uh, six different items that we intend to bring forward to you. One is review and provide feedback on the playground replacement prioritization plan, review and recommend direction for cemetery operations and fees. This one is really aimed at making that enterprise fund a true enterprise fund that does not need general fund subsidy. It's an important uh, project for us. Review and approve fees for Calippi Preserve Golf Course. Again, another great project that helps us keep that um, golf course fiscally sustainable. Review and provide feedback on the non-functional turf reduction on city property related to AB 1572. This one is a legislative piece for us and um, something our team is working on. Evaluate the Park Ambassador Program. So we do have that pilot program running currently. And then um, the one that you all had added was to review master plans for both Staples Ranch and Bernal Community Parks. All right, any questions? Could we, during that timeline, add any items? I think the, the, you know, the, the only things that are probably going to be coming to you that we could actually accomplish during this time are going to be budget related. So um, items being brought forward uh, related to the budget, keeping you informed on the two year budget process, because that'll be happening in the beginning of 25 as well. Um, I would recommend saving additional projects and ideas for the two year work plan. That would be a great time to do that as we're moving into a new budget cycle. You had mentioned um, in the spring looking at other master fee adjustment, master fee schedule adjustments. Were the cemetery and Calippe the only two? Cemetery Calippe, the, um, there is a bigger master fee uh, schedule project going on. I just, I, I believe it will likely fall into the following fiscal year, so it's not on this work plan. Um, if you want to add it, we could try to get it to you prior to prior to July 1. We may have to, <laughs> depending on how things go. Um, I did have a question. It, it said on bullet point um, on the next steps, it said uh, begin the next work cycle in 2016, or 2016, 2026. Um, what are we doing between June? That is a typo. I'm really sorry. Okay. It's 2025. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, there's six months that there's nothing there. That is my mistake. Thank you for catching that. Okay. All right. Other questions? All right. Um, then as we've been continually doing, we'll make a motion and then comments. So does anybody want to... Um, move to approve the Parks and Recs Commission short-term work plan priorities for 2024-2025. Um, yes, um, I move to approve the Parks and Recreation Commission short-term work plan priorities for FY. Cool, do we have a second? Can we make an amendment to add the master fee schedule you, you, update? You bet we can, as soon as we finish this one. Okay. You wanna say, you seconding? Okay, I second. There we go. Okay. All right, so now comments and any amendments. All good. Can we uh, make an amendment to add the master fee schedule update? 
to this list? All right. Is there a second to that? I second. All right. Any comments on adding the master fee schedule? Because then we'll 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 approve that to be added to. I would just like to comment. That's a very 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 big project. We have staff working on it now. I. Um, that would come to us either way, right? It's going to come to you either way. I just can't guarantee it's going to come to you by the end of the fiscal year. But we are working on it, and our, we will try our hardest to get it back to you before the end well, of the fiscal year. We've got one little small portion of it tonight, so perhaps we can get it pieces of it. The next update's going to be a, a holistic update that you're going to see. So it's going to be moving categories around. But uh, don't you think all this is a wish list at this time? We might move out some of them, move in some of them. With the, with the things that are going on? Um, I wish as well. I, I guess um, perhaps. I think that some of them, you know, some of them are legislative, so we're going to have to figure out a plan for them. It doesn't mean we have to do the work necessarily. The fees are going to be something we're really looking at. Um, prioritizing playground replacement is going to be even more important with, um, with less, you know, money coming in, right? Really just you know, aren't wish list items, they're items that need to be accomplished and done and will help the fiscal situation in many areas. Maybe I'm confused. Are we saying we cannot table any items for the forthcoming commission meetings outside these items? Is that what I'm, how we need to look at it? There are items that will probably be coming forward that aren't on this list. Um, I, it, this is not all that can be done. Um, it's just to help primary us, items. primary items to help mm -hmm. us focus. There will be items that come up, um, potentially like the urban forest master plan, because that project is underway and will likely need your input. There's um, projects around the budget that are going to be coming up. We just don't know what those are yet. Um, but we will fold them in. So this is not an exhaustive list. This is just really meant to help us focus on bigger where projects. we're going, the bigger projects. And this, just so you know, is just a, a kind of a pilot on how we're doing the work plans. We, we don't really know what we're doing with these yet until we get into the two-year budget cycle and all the commissions start to work on these work plans together. But we're just trying to paint a road map for you so you know what's ahead and what's coming up and a gap project <laughs> so if we if we were to approve this amendment then it would be that we are asking you to bring it to us as soon as possible which may not be before july 1st is what your is what we're saying we'd like it as soon as possible and you're saying it might not be before july 1st it might be july 10th or it might be september Hopefully, we can get it to you before. Yeah, I mean, we are working diligently on this project. It's a really heavy lift. So for me, I, the way I look at it is, at the, we might have three meetings between now and June, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Question is, what do you want to do and whether these are the items we need to focus or recommend to be focused or you want to so focus can, on something if else? If we can just handle the amendment first, which is the master fee schedule, Do are we... Are we wanting to add that to this list? That was the amendment on here. That was the uh, the request. I'd like to try. Is there any can. is there any comments on that? Mm -mm. Okay, so let's take a let's just take a vote to see if we want to add that to there, and then we'll go back to the original list. So, how about a roll call? Commissioner Alfaro. Yes. Commissioner Deckard. Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner Imadi? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. And Chair Brown? Yes. Okay. So now we have a list of one, two, one, two, three, four, five, seven. Six, seven. Thank you. Seven items. Um, and, as, and we uh, want to approve um, if uh, this is what we want to work on for the next three meetings that we will have next year. Uh, or next, we next, haven't next. agreed on that yet, but the next uh, six months. Six months. 
and with the caveat that if you need additional meetings definitely we can call for the additional meeting yes. if needed yes right, right. any uh, comments uh, that anybody wants to say about these seven items here Please. One, one quick Absolutely. comment. I, if if we do get to the master fee schedule, um, is it possible to be notified ahead of the meeting in case we want to schedule another meeting? Because we, it's a big topic, and I think it would be it might require more than one meeting. I would say that yes, um, but also we could have a second meeting, right? So if the first one wasn't sufficient, right. we could continue okay. the item to a to a meeting where we set a special meeting date. Okay. Um, the one that you all asked for last time was review master plans for Staples Ranch and Bernal Community Parks. Um, that will just be an informational item. So it's a heavy staff lift to get all of that information to you packaged up in an agenda packet. Um, and I just wanted to share that that's entirely informational. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you want that information, um, it's all available online, but we can turn it into an agenda report. But on that item, I keep seeing uh, news on the patch and uh, other news outlets about the Staple Ranch plan already under discussion. Is it not the case? There is a Staples Ranch master plan already in place. Um, and I think, I don't know what's happening um, as a broader discussion with those properties, but if something's happening citywide, then we would be notified and we'd bring it through this commission. You would see a city council report on that if it was part of Pleasanton's. What is that? I think what the council would have had a report on it if we had any progress on that, right? I think there are people interested in doing things at that property. Um, it's a currently master planned for uh, ice rink. Okay, thank you. If, if maybe I'm mistaken, but um, does this encamp? We had talked about maybe having a working session where we were, I don't know, working on some of the stuff versus having you know approving it. I I, I don't remember. I, I feel like I that's what we talked about. I'm not sure how that's possible. I'm not sure which one you'd want to do a workshop for, but if there's something that you want to do a workshop format for, we could certainly work on a way to post that and find a time to do that. It might have been for what we were going to do in 2025 or 2025. For our work plan priorities. So maybe that was where it was. And so maybe not these, but for the next. Yes, that one might need to be a broader workshop okay. um, related to budget and everything else. Okay. All right. Um, any other discussion, um, comments, questions on this one? All right, then um, let's go ahead and take a vote on it and roll call. Um, so, and that is to approve the Parks and Recs Commission short-term work plan priorities for 2024-2025 um, with the amendment to add an update on the master fee schedule. Roll call to you. Commissioner Alfaro? Yes. Commissioner Deckard? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner Imadi? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. And Chair Brown? Yes. Thank you. All right. Next, um, we are going to go to the review and approve the Parks and Recs Commission meeting schedule for calendar year 2025. All right. So this is item eight in your packet, page 50 of 56 of your agenda packet. And um, based upon the 2025 holiday schedule and our um, requirement to meet at least six times per year, the recommendation for dates um, and also based on the work plan projects and when they um, will be coming forward, the recommended, recommended dates are January 9th, March 13th, and May 8th. And then um, also recommended for the second part which won't be part of this work plan um, July 10th September 11th and November 13th all right any any questions 
All right. Um, should we go ahead and, and have a motion? Is there a motion needed on this? Oh, I didn't see it. Okay. Review and approve. All right. So I um, need a motion to approve the Parks and Recs Commission meeting schedule for calendar year 2025. Motion to approve. I second it. All right. Any comments? Any thoughts, comments? All right, then um, we'll do a roll call. Commissioner Alfaro? Yes. Commissioner Deckert? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner Imadi? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. And Chair Brown? Yes. Thank you. All right, on to number nine. Um, review and select committee assignments for calendar year 2025. Great, thank you very much. So um, for 2025, we are recommending one change. Um, through all of our work, uh, putting an agreement together with the Community of Character, we have realized that the Community of Character is a nonprofit and not a committee. Um, so we are recommending not appointing a committee member to a nonprofit because that is outside of what we do with our other nonprofits that we help support. Um, and so we're recommending just getting that in line with everything else. Um, that does not mean that any of you cannot join the board of the Community of Character as private citizens. Um, it's a lovely, wonderful group that's doing great things in the community, but we're just recommending dropping it as a committee of the Park and Rec Commission. And so in this instance, we are recommending that you select a um, committee appointee and a vice appointee, so a, an alternate that could attend for you for the Bike, Pedestrian, and Trails Committee, the Heritage Tree Board of Appeals, the Public Art Selection Subcommittee, and the co-sponsored sports user group for calendar year 2025. Um, on page 53 of 56 of your packet, page two of this report, it lists your current representatives and alternatives for each of these groups. I have a question. So the question is like, uh, my understanding is the community character, community of character, even though it's a non-profit, it's kind of a different from other non-profits where the city of Pleasanton, Pleasanton community, Pleasanton Chamber of Commerce and the Pleasanton Unified School District essentially are kind of coming together as part of that non-profit to to promote the characters to the community members. And I think that is how I see a difference between other nonprofits and this one. So is city pulling out because they contribute in many ways? The city is not pulling out. The agreement that we have with Community of Character, the new one that we signed this year, has a staff liaison to that. That's what it says okay. in the report. Okay. Okay, so we are, you know, for this year, we funded Community of Character like we always have, and we have a staff liaison assigned to the Community of Character, not as a board member. Um, so we changed that. And then um, for following years, as we discussed at Community of Character, the Community of Character will run through our grant process like our other nonprofits, so requesting money through, through the typical channels for nonprofits. And uh, do we... Do we fund any other nonprofits? Yes, other? we do. Okay. And uh, considering the uh, community, we represent the community as the Parks and Recs, are we, as the staff, liaison is going to give an update for, uh, from this meeting? No, we would not provide an update to this meeting. It would no longer be considered a committee for this commission. Okay. Okay, thank you. Other questions? All right, well, then uh, we don't really have a motion because we have to figure out who's there. So let's, uh, let's, figure, let's work on figuring that out. Um, and then we'll create a motion. All right. Um, the folks that are already doing, um, being the representatives, we don't have a primary representative for the co-sponsor user group. Um, and I don't know about the, uh, the, three people who are doing all four of those. So maybe there's an opportunity for the other two commissioners who haven't had that opportunity to, to step into one of the um, committees. Um, Is there anything you'd like to do? 
Uh, yes, I just thought the the pass or the public art selection subcommittee. I know it's on at an as needed basis, but I thought that that was particularly interesting. Mm -hmm. So if there's opportunity for that, that would be great. Are you available on Fridays at noon? Um, I think I have school, so I'm not quite sure. Okay, yeah. So that group, um, if you look at throughout your packet, it says what day and time they meet. Um, so passes as needed, but they do meet Fridays at noon. Um, so like the co-sponsored user group is in the evening. Bike, pet, and trails is in the evening. Um, Heritage Tree Board is evening. truly evening. as needed as mm -hmm. evening. Yeah. Um, so just based on your availability is important too to consider. Oh, and the the Heritage Tree Board was that wasn't the nonprofit that you'd mentioned earlier, correct? Mm -hmm. Or that was the Community of Character? Yes. Correct. Okay. Then yeah, the Heritage Tree Board of Appeals Committee was also <laughs> great. Okay. I'm sort of interested in that one too. If okay. uh, if the two people that are on it are not, or bike pet. Okay. 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 Uh, which is a separate subcommittee yep. that includes two city council members, myself as a person on the Heritage Tree Committee, and a planning commission. I, maybe that's it. Maybe that's, that, maybe that's it. So I'm not sure if I'm no longer on the Heritage Tree Committee if I get detached from that urban tree master plan. Ah. Yeah. So. Well, maybe that's an, and that's yeah. an opportunity to... Um, it's a project that's... It's con con chapter that for people that have, for those of us on it that it's kind of a dis continued discussion so well, I, well, so I was going to say maybe that's an opportunity for um, Commissioner Alfaro to kind of work with you on that mm -hmm. and a different uh, and be able to do that sure so we can leave you on and then we can put Commissioner Alfaro on and then you said you had a second choice uh, bike pad I guess Bike pad, just so you know, uh, the bike pad representative on the on the uh, the, uh, the parks liaison on the bike pad is automatically the chair of that committee too. So you'll be chairing the the bike pad meetings, I, which is I thought oh, I swear, that that's wasn't. a change. That's a change. That's a change. That's, that's, that I was that was the last month was this month that I was still the chair. But you're right, it changes after this. So yeah, so now now they're going to choose the chair. But it used to be the chair was the chair of the chair was always the parks and recreation liaison to that committee. We found it. We My husband used to be on that committee. Yep. Uh, uh. But uh, was it interesting? Did you like it? Sure. <laughs> I, I'm a ped. I'm a ped person. You're a ped person. Okay. And then, I mean, I I didn't do anything as the alternate because you were always there, so no one ever called me. Um, so, I, do you want to flip to the alternate, Chuck? Sure. Sure. Is that okay? So I'm, so I'm, I'm stepping out. Still have passed and still have the co-sponsored user group. Yep. Yeah. I can keep. Yeah. So, what are you interest? What are you interested in? The issue is I work in the from three o'clock and most of them will not allow us allow me to do that. So I, I might be sitting out. Okay. Okay. Did you work after three? You're. Yeah. So pass would be something you could do if you wanted pass, to do the pass. pass. No, no. I, I will sit out. You'll sit out. Okay, yeah. okay. And Mike, what about yourself? So, so what do we have? Who's doing a co-sponsor user group? You. Uh, we don't have anybody in, in <laughs> Steve's spot. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be in war with these people. Nobody wants to step up on that. If I nobody mean, else if, will, I will. I've been on the, the I've been on the committee before, so it's. They love you, Chuck. No, mm -hmm. I don't know if they love me, but uh, like you, I, uh, I have my yeah. confidence. I'll, I'll, I'll continue as the alternate. So okay. when you're not feeling well, I can jump okay. in. Okay. That's okay. Okay. And I can still be the backup for Heritage. Well, we. Unless somebody wants to jump on that. Um, Commissioner, 
El Faro so was going to do that. that. Yes, that, that was how I was gotcha. was suggesting. Okay. So it would be alternate. For yes, the, okay. and then so if because we don't know how, and we'll have discussions about how I can move you into my role. So okay, yeah. awesome. Do we have everybody? No. So are you, who's doing pass? I'm doing pass. Got it. So representative, so we have for the, the. Um, you need an alternate on pass, don't right. you? Who's all, who's all. Oh yeah, so who's doing, who? I was just gonna do represent, maybe we should figure out representatives first, do I have? Okay. We uh, have it, don't we? Do we? Yeah, I think so. Do you have it? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. We are just missing, uh, Pass, pass alternate. Pass. Pass, yeah. pass alternate. Okay. And who wants to do that? What's the question? I'm sorry. Pass, pass alternate. alternate. Oh, alternate. Sorry. I can't do that. I'm retired. I can do an alternate on that. So. Okay. It's a, it's a new meaning. <laughs> it's every Friday. No. 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 no, 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 it, no, no. It's like once or twice a year Friday. <laughs> Joanne, go for it. <laughs> Uh, no, I can't do on Friday, so. Um, Take it, Joanne. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you do you want to happen to read back what we have? <laughs> do you want me to do it, Anya? Or you got it. I, I got I, it. I but you're okay. Welcome, Go ahead, Anya. So we have DPTC Commissioner Hall, um, representative and alternate Commissioner Deckard, mm -hmm. for Heritage Three Board of Appeals, Commissioner Deckard. Um, uh, alternate Commissioner Alfaro for pass uh, Chair Brown mm -hmm. and alternate um, Commissioner Hall, co-sponsor user group Commissioner Deckard and um, Commissioner Vickers as alternate. Way better than I did. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve that? I put a motion to approve it. Do I have a second? I second. All right. Uh, any comments? I'm hoping not. Uh, maybe we just go right to a roll call. I'm glad to see these new commissioners fully integrated, <laughs> and they're going to have yes. an incredible impact Absolutely. on our city. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. All right. We still have to vote. <laughs> Commissioners Alfaro? Yes. Commissioner Deckard? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner Imadi? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. Chair Brown? Yes. Thank you. All righty. Okay, we are down to our last item. Give me a second to. Can I ask you a quick question? Of Does course. Does notify us when there's things coming? Yes. Up when yes. Questions? We give you plenty of notice, and usually you get to help um, identify the Friday. For for pass, they sent me a note uh, four weeks before saying <laughs> we have this. Can you make this date? And okay. So good. Yeah, it's okay. quite good. Thanks. All right, down to the last item, selecting a chair and vice chair for 2025. I'd um, like to nominate somebody. All right. Can we do that? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Just throw it out. Yeah. Ramesh for chair. Mr. Ahmadi for a, chair. Yeah, political sign you want to wave? I, uh, he has been on the commission as long as I have. Chuck's our senior um, with distinction. And, um, and I think Ramesh would be very good in the role. That's my comment. Thank you. You're welcome. And then do we have, uh, for uh, vice, do we, how do we, we, do we vote in one person? I, I wasn't would here probably last try to do chair and then vice chair. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't here last year for that, so I wasn't sure. It gets okay. a little confusing okay. otherwise. Mike, okay. you want to make that into motion? For a mesh, for a Put mesh. a motion in. I'd like to make a motion um, to, um, to have, Ramesh Amadi be the chair for 2025. I'll second that. All right. Do we roll call vote or are we? I think you need to do comments because if anyone else wanted to nominate someone different, this would be the time they would do it. Or if someone wanted to self nominate, we just want to make sure everyone gets heard. Got it. Um, so do we have comments? I mean, you're chair now, or would you like to take that position again? Is this something you're interested in? Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. I, uh, I do like doing this, and I thoroughly enjoy um, 
you know, running the meetings and helping to get that out. And I get, I understand as well if other people want that opportunity to, to do that. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. So, okay. Then I, any other comments or any other things? No. Okay. Well, then we will vote on the motion. Commissioner Alfaro? Uh, yes. Commissioner Deckard? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner Imadi? Yes. Commissioner Vickers? Yes. Chair Brown? Yes. Thank you. All right, so we should we do a vice chair? Is there anybody who wants to do a uh, vice chair? Um, I'd nominate you, actually. Oh. Okay. okay. I mean, I'm making a motion. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I move to nominate, uh, chair, I guess now would be chair, vice, Bra vice chair, or cha um, chair, I'm Brown. still the chair, chair. until chair. the, so it's okay, so chair, chair Brown, Brown. yes, year, chair year. Brown, uh, for 2025. Yes. I'll second that. All right. Comments. Comments. You can ask questions. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I would like to say that, um, Chair Brown, you've done a fantastic job this year. And we've, I think, just being on this uh, commission that we've rotated. Um, but I could see you as chair for life. Because <laughs> so, you just, I mean, just, you're, you're nailing it. So we can all learn from that. I was chair for a year. Um, it's fun. It's, you know, you're, you're, you feel a little pressure. Um, but um, I, I'm learning from from you what you're doing so thank you thank you thank you it's been it's been a pleasure everyone would it's agree yeah. quite nice mm -hmm. yeah so all right so we'll take a roll call vote commissioner alfaro yes commissioner deckard yes commissioner hall yes commissioner imadi yes commissioner vickers yes chair brown yes <laughs> all right then um let's move on to is there any commission reports Any of the commission, any of the um, committees meet or anything for the last? I, I have a meeting on Friday, so. You want to go down the list? You can, yeah. I just didn't have it on here. Yeah. It's on the back page. Yeah, I got to go find it again. Of the agenda. I have it here. You can read it. Yeah, I'm just confused where it went. Okay. On the back yep. page of the agenda. Previous, uh, oh, on the previous. Uh, yeah. yeah, got it. Meeting minutes. Okay, um, bicycle pedestrian trail committee. Yes, we did have a meeting. Um, we, we went over the uh, bicycle and pedestrian master plan update that's going to be going forward for the next 18 months. Um, and uh, we just went, looked over the proposal review. Um, it looked good for us as mainly just uh, road improvements and uh, other safety um, improvements to the to our roads and around the schools. And um, but basically, it's just the, it's, uh, we didn't really see the full master plan, but uh, that's for the most part, I'm sure what it'll deal with. And also, it's being covered by a couple um, AA and BB, I think, funds. Um, so overall, that was that was the only thing we really had discussion about. Um, last community of character update. So we talked about the about the upcoming uh, events, uh, specifically the the breakfast event that comes up, and and uh, we talked about how much money we collected uh, from the fundraising event uh, in the auction and all that. So we had community of character raised enough money uh, to increase the number of scholarships. And uh, we had about 50% or 25 to 50% more funds collected uh, this year. So we discussed about what are we going to do, how we are going to do, and about the breakfast event, whether we are going to do it or not do it. So a lot of discussions were went on that this, during that. That's all. Cool. And peace out, right? <laughs> all right. And then um, the Heritage Tree Review. Anything there? Okay. And then I think um, the pass, pass uh, is next, and that there's a meeting tomorrow, so I'll be attending that. And then the last but not least, the co-sponsor 
group, but I don't know if Steve had gone to that. I haven't heard. But. Yeah, I think Steve went there. I don't know. I don't know to report for him. Okay. All right. And that's all we have there. Um, anything matters initiated or future agenda items? All right. Then I'll, if there's nothing else, then I will take a motion to adjourn. Second. I second it. Okay. Perfect. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thanks.